resolve in your heart three things. Number one, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. Say, I have a purpose. There is a reason why you were created. Number two, you have an assignment. Say, I have an assignment. Your assignment is your current application of your purpose. And it's your spiritual gifts, if you steward them correctly, that will cause you to be successful in both. You have a purpose, you have an assignment, and it's your spiritual gifts that will cause you to be successful. And if you don't steward them correctly, you will miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. Imagine with me for just a second. You're getting ready to board a plane. Everyone has a ticket, right? And on that ticket has your assigned seat. There's an assignment that goes with that ticket, correct? And you're getting ready to board the plane, but for those few stragglers that aren't in place in time, what do they do? They start making a call. There's a call of your name saying, you are about to miss your flight. You're about to miss your seat. Where are you? There's a seat with your name on it, but where are you? You're not occupying it. And if you don't answer that call, there's someone standing by waiting to take your seat. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. The gifts and the calling of God on your life are irrevocable, but your assignment can be delegated. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. And I just declare, if you get a hold of this, moments are coming back to you. Those moments that you missed, those moments that you slept, those moments that you were too lazy to take a hold of, you will seize them this weekend. They're coming back to you. Your moments are coming back. Oh, I want to sober you about these spiritual gifts because God is serious about it. He's serious. There are people waiting on you. There are people waiting on you. He's serious about this. Hmm. Let's go to the word. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. And I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. And it says, <clears throat> now concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. Let's skip down to verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one as he wills. <clears throat> Let's defy spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are simply distinct manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. And what you need to know is that every single one of you should be moving in at least one. Every single one of you. It doesn't matter where you serve. It doesn't matter if you just, you're on the hospitality team or you just a greeter. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the leaders. It's for you. Everybody should be moving in a spiritual gift. Every believer. They're not optional. They're vital to the believer. They're vital to the kingdom. You must work in your spiritual gift. Oh, let's get serious here. Oh, scripture tells us to rekindle the gifts of God. In other words, ignite the gifts in you. It's not an option. It's a must-have. You have to do this. Oh, 
1 Corinthians 4.20, it says, God's kingdom is not just mere talk. It is power. It is power. We do a whole lot of good talking. You can go to any church in the city and hear some good talking. But where's the power? You cannot separate God from his power. It's him and power. It's talk and power. Not just talk, but talk and power. Oh, and that power is in you. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you, what you've done. God has deposited some gifts in you. Oh, the power of God is on the inside of you, and he wants to use you to change the world. Will you wake up and answer the call? Oh, it's time to wake up. Hmm. Wake up. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. I want you to, to go here with me. Mark chapter 16. And I'm going to read verse 17 through 18. Okay. Listen as I read. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I want you to pay attention to that very first sentence. It says, and these signs will follow those who? They will follow those who? They will follow just the pastor. They will follow the head bishop. They will follow the lead prayer worker. They will follow those who believe. Say, that's me. That's you. Everybody should be moving in signs and wonders. Everybody should be moving in their spiritual gifts. It's for everybody. You are not discounted. It's for everybody. Everybody. Don't be content where you are. Don't be content with just doing what you're doing now. It's time to level up. Oh, get out of that contentment. Level up. Hmm. So if you believe, there should be evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And that is what we call spiritual gifts. And so we're going to talk about nine of these spiritual gifts. There's other scriptures that lift at, list out many more gifts, but we're only going to focus on nine for the purposes of today. We'll get into those deeper later, but I'll list them for you right now. So the spiritual gifts we're going to be talking about today are the, is the gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of a word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the workings of miracles, the gift of various kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation, and the gift of prophecy. Everyone can move in those. Don't be intimidated. Everyone can move in those. So the big question is why? Why does God give them? What's their purpose? Are they still relevant? Why did God give us these gifts? Number one, for the common good. Scripture tells us to desire earnestly spiritual gifts because somebody is waiting on you. Oh, I, I learned a powerful lesson about this recently, and I talked about this on Facebook Live, but I want to share it here as well. I took a ministry trip to California with some other ministry leaders and we were there for a conference and I was we all were waiting in line to enter into this conference and as we were in line there was this ministry group from that church and they started coming down the line asking people who needs to be healed and so I knew that I wanted to desperately experience this power of God. I wanted to. And so I kept thinking, what do I need to be healed from? I, I just couldn't think of anything. I said, I don't have any infirmities, I don't think. I was like, I, I don't have anything to be healed, but, Lord, I want to experience this. Oh, but God brought back to my memory these uh, pa uh, chest pains that I have been dealing with for years, so much so that they've just become part of my life, to be honest. Every time I would take deep breaths, I would get these pain attacks in my chest, and they would be so paralyzing, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk until it passed. I would go to the emergency room. The doctors couldn't tell me what was going on. 
And you may be thinking, why in the world would that not be the first thing you thought of when someone asked you to be healed? It's because I had been living in that place for so long, it was just a part of me. And it wasn't until a gift showed up that I knew I needed to be healed. Oh, these gifts are for the common good. It wasn't until the gift showed up. There are people that are waiting on you that don't even know they need what you have. Who? Present your gift. Present it. Walk in it. It's for the common good. Number two, it's for the whole body to strengthen the church and to fulfill its mission. The local church is so important. You don't get these gifts and go off and be a renegade and do your own thing. You strengthen the church with it. Don't, don't uh, get so high and mighty and work in your gifts and you become an orphan and you're no longer in a house. You need to stay connected to a house. It's for the house, the strengthening of the house. Number three, they're for the effectiveness of the gospel. Mark 16 says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. The word of God is most effective when signs follow. When signs follow, not just talking, but when signs follow, that's when it's most effective. That's what draws people. That's what gets people's attention when signs follow. So it's okay to desire spiritual gifts. God wants you to. He wants you to ask for more. You asking for more doesn't intimidate him. It invigorates him. He wants you to desire them. He wants you to desire more gifts and to be all that he wants you to be. Don't be ashamed of them. Don't run away from it. Don't shirk back. You are so gifted and you don't even know it. You're so gifted. There's so much more deep inside of you. And you may be doing a lot. You may, be, you may have everything, but there's more. There's always more. There's always more. Hmm. So what you have to understand is that spiritual gifts are spiritual. They're nothing that you can manufacture. You can't get a hold of them without God, without the Holy Spirit. It's spiritual. It's nothing that you can just come up with on your own. And for every spiritual thing, there is a distinct spiritual attack. And the devil wants to keep you from getting your gifts. He wants to keep you from receiving your gifts. So much so that he's having strategy sessions just to keep you from receiving what you need. Oh, God is serious about your gifts, and he's serious about keeping them from you. You have an enemy. He doesn't want you to walk in these. And you need to know what his attacks are. Before we get to these spiritual gifts and what you can do, we have to clean house first. You need to know what the devil is doing to choke you, to keep you from receiving these. Mr. Will, can you come up here with your chair, please? I want to show you what this looks like, how the devil is working in some of you to keep you from your gifts. The first way, go ahead and sit in and sit all the way back, please. The first way that the devil works to keep you from your spiritual gifts is unrepentant sin. Mm, unrepentant sin. It breaks your communion with God. It keeps you in shame and guilt, and it keeps you in bondage to that thing. So when you don't repent, you're in bondage. can't go anywhere. You're in bondage. Unrepentant sin. Number two, fear. Fear of failure. Fear of inadequacy. 
that you're not good enough, that you don't have what it takes. And so it keeps you stuck. You don't move and you don't do anything. When you're in fear, your perspective is off. You can't see things correctly. You can't see things for how they truly are. You can't see yourself the way God sees you. Number three. Thoughts of rejection. He tries to sow those seed, those thoughts into your head that no one will receive you, that you just don't fit in. You don't see who may need your gift. So he sows seeds of rejection. And so because you feel rejected, you won't put your hands to anything and you won't do anything. you feel rejected it makes your heart sick and number four prayerlessness when you don't pray you're not communing with God. You're not talking to him, and he's not talking to you. So guess what? And because you're not speaking to God, he can neither hear you. You can't hear him, so it affects your ears. So when you allow the enemy to work in your life and keep you from your gifts, you're walking around like this, and you don't even know it. Some of you came in here this morning. <laughs> hmm. You came in here this morning excited. I'm going to get activated. I'm going to use my gifts. Little did you know, you walked in here looking like this. So, Mr. Will, imagine I'm God. I have a gift for you, William. I'm calling you, William. You're going to be a prophet to the nations. You're going to bring many people to Christ. I have these gifts for you that you need. Come and get it. Come and get the gift, William. He can't. This is how the devil works, to keep you from receiving and I'm getting emotional because for what felt like a year, that's where I was. I had a big gap in my life from where I, I wanted to be and where I knew God was calling me to be. I knew there were gifts. I knew there was more inside of me. But the devil had me tangled up like this. And I started to blame everyone else except for me. I'm going to let you in. I started blaming my husband. As good as he is to me, if he would do this, this, and that, he's holding me back. That's why I can't do what I'm called to do. I started blaming my job. I've been the church secretary for nine years. I need to do more.
it wasn't that. It was this. The devil had me tangled up. So before we get to these spiritual gifts, we have to clean house. We have to deal with this first. And as I mentioned, spiritual gifts are spiritual. So if you want them, you have to walk with the Spirit. You have to be one with the Spirit. You have to pray in the Spirit. It's so important. The Bible tells us to pray with the Spirit and with our mind. Not just with our mind, but with our mind and with the Spirit. It's so important. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't dare, <clears throat> I wouldn't dare trust my mind alone to keep me from this, to get me out of this. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Ghost. You need to be able to pray. You need to be able to access heaven to break you out of this. I want you to think of praying in tongues as your possessor. It's a possessor. When you start praying in the Holy Spirit, bondages start to break. Mm. You're more repentant. When you start praying in the Spirit, your hands become free. You can hear the Father talking to you. You're opening up your mouth. You can see things for how they really are. You see yourself correctly. Your heart starts to open up. And you begin to walk in what God is calling you to do. So now... William, go get your gift. <laughs>